Fight 4 class. Thanks for coming down. Who's new to uh, classes here? Anybody new today? Nice, welcome. We've got a couple new ones. We always record these, so it'll be up. I uh, probably won't get it edited until Monday, but it'll be up on the website. I typically have a long-winded handout for all the classes if you weren't here at the beginning. Um, this was like 14 pages long with the new plant list with my little description. So I saved a tree and didn't print copies. You would have had a packet to take home. <laughs> so you'll see here in a second. I've got QR codes up here. If you got a fancy phone, you can dial it up by QR code. Um, or it's always on our website. The whole new page is always up in January. So there's a whole new page dedicated to the new stuff we're talking about today and a lot of other stuff. Um, list is on there and pictures and information on it all too. So you can always go onto the, go onto the website and grab it. All right. So I, I'm going to probably use the term flavors. I always like plant flavors better than saying cultivar or variety over and over again. So we'll probably use all three of them. But there's always new plant cultivars out every year. This is kind of... Uh, something I enjoy kind of investigating last year trying some things out. What do we want to carry for our customers for the next gardening season? Um, breeders keep breeding and growers keep growing. So this is probably never going to change If you're a plant aholic like me and you look at varieties of things things are starting to look awful A lot alike with certain plants. There's way too many hostas way too many hookahs way too many hydrangeas and all the above so there's quite a few that Proven Winter has their brand, and Monrovia has their brand, and Bailey has their brand, and I look at all three, and I'm like, yeah, they look pretty close to the same. So, so you'll see some new things always every year. <coughs> you know, some things are planned. Um, some things happen by accident. Frankly, some of the better plants I've seen come out over the years were just a freaking nature accident. They weren't even meant to be. Um, a lot of times. A grower's growing a thousand or something and they'll walk out once you know one year and say wait a minute that's got totally different leaf color or that's blooming a different color or that's got a different growth habit whatever it is they can pull it aside take cuttings propagate it see if they can get the same consistent new variety on for any plant period so a lot of times that's how it happens by accident other places I'm sure you see on the net and advertisers like proven winners and other companies that's all they do is splice and dice and mix pollen and seeds and try to get to certain characteristics or certain varieties so we, we, we certainly get a little bit of both um it's hard here we're obviously out of space i told ben yesterday we need to buy another acre that's probably not going to happen so unless we can well we won't buy al's house next door but we'll try probably someday um you know we have to start making choices at some point you know what are we going to carry i like some old school i like some new school What's the mix that our customers are going to enjoy here? I'm carrying some of the tried and true and frankly getting a lot of the new stuff in too because a lot of gardeners do want kind of the latest and greatest. I was laughing this morning of all mornings. I'm an NPR guy. Anyone listen to NPR? So I'm listening this morning and on the way to work they were talking about glow in the dark petunias. So I might go on night line tonight and actually order one and try it because they've, they've actually genetically put bioluminescence into petunia flowers, which blew my mind. So you could have white petunia baskets that glow in the dark at night. And I thought, you know, it would be kind of fun. I'm not a big petunia guy, but I think I'm going to try one of those. So, so there's an example of something they tried to get to. I think they took uh, genes out of a glow-in-the-dark mushroom and somehow meshed it with petunia genetics and got a glow-in-the-dark bioluminescent white petunia, which is kind of fun. So, um, I'll warn you this: a lot of magazines, um, you know, I read all the probably the same things you guys do. We get them at the store, I get them at home, I get them on my email, find gardening and this and that and the rest of it. They're always notorious for advertising new things before they're available to homeowners. That happens on every week, every day, every year, it seems like. Uh, proven Winners is probably the worst, I'll be honest, especially with shrubs and trees. Everything they said will be available last year in garden centers is now really available in 2024. So uh, we get caught up at some point, but be careful what you read online. Um, it's not like we don't want to carry it. And a lot of times it's just not out there yet. So there's some things we might have to wait a little bit. Um, honestly, the fall is a big time for this, which is part of the reason I gave everybody a coupon. Um, a lot of times we'll get new introductions for 2024. They actually came in last fall that we got to try a few and see how we liked it and our staff liked it. Uh, we got a bunch of gardening geeks around here working for us. So usually if the staff gets excited, I get excited. Typically you guys are going to like the same kinds of things. So 
I'll bring them in in the fall and we'll try it out. Uh, but ultimately, we're striving for some improved characteristic in some way. You know, that's the whole gist of a new variety. Um, top of the list is going to be flower power. Everybody who wants more blooms, who doesn't like flowers in here? Probably no one's going to raise their hand. Um, you know, is it a bigger flower? Is it a different color? Does it bloom a longer season? Is it a huge one with me? Um, especially in perennials these days, I'd rather have something that blooms continuously the whole summer versus the little six week interval. Um, so now the vast majority of the new perennials are like annuals to me, except they come back every year. So I don't have to buy as much annual flower. We can do the same thing with perennials. Uh, foliage color is a big one. Variegation, leaf size, leaf shape. Is it gold? Is it blue? Is it green? Um, you know, there's a lot of variation in foliage, and that's another one with me. I enjoy a lot of different foliage color. I'm always looking for stable variegation. You know, that's a tough one. I'm sure you guys have had variegated plants, you know, with yellow splash on green or white on green. And what happens inevitably is I walk out and there's one big green branch to grow out of it and it reverts back to its species. We got to prune that out right away, first of all, and tendency will come back again variegated. But certain plants do that more than others, and certainly some new varieties will be a little bit more stable than other ones as well. Um, and again, growth habits big. You know, a lot of people have smaller spaces this, this, these days. They want to grow it in a pot versus the ground. So how can we find a, a plant that's more compact, narrower, doesn't get as big? You know, that magical word dwarf, you know, where your brain pictures this little tiny thing when it's really not quite that tiny as it grows. So um, a lot of that's things we're looking for too. Um, I don't know anybody who likes to spray. That's probably the same answer as whoever doesn't like flowers around here. Um, so I'm always looking for stuff that's disease resistant. You know, I don't have to spray it, don't have to worry about it. Roses are a big one with that when we try roses, but certainly we don't want to have people that spray for bugs or spray for disease all the time just to have that new variety in the yard. We want to make sure it's a little bit more uh, resilient. So hopefully what this means is you guys are going to get more satisfaction out of a new plant you add into your landscape and you're going to have less maintenance. You know, those are the two big goals with hopefully trying some of these new things out. Okay. So I put the QR codes on here. Um, if you again, if you just go to SunnysideNursery.net, you'll find the same thing. Click on the new plant tab. You can get the list on there. The pictures of everything are on there, as, and a lot more stuff than I'm going to show today because we would be here probably for a couple hours if I showed one slide of every single plant that we had coming in that was new for us this year. So there's a little QR code. I put it at the end too, just in case. So just a couple things I'll mention in the store. You know, we're always, again, looking for things that add a little bit to the gardener, different options people ask us for every year. Um, our staff might see something out there in a different brand or a different nursery they like. What should we try to carry? Um, these are a couple of new things from our organics company that we buy from uh, EB Stone that, we'll, that are out for this year. So Earth First Potting Soil will be out here probably in May. It's not quite um, registered by the State of Washington Department of Ag yet. But this will be the first potting soil I've seen that has zero peat moss in it. So if that's important to you, and we've had a lot of customers ask for a cocoa core based potting soil that doesn't rob the peat bogs in Canada and is a little bit safer to use. Um, all organic the same way. But I think this might be the go-to potting soil going forward. We're going to probably start using it here a little bit when it comes in. And I think a lot of customers are going to gravitate towards that as well. So it's still, <coughs> excuse me, all the same connoisseur, uh, good organic ingredients that Edna's Best would have. And there's certainly nothing wrong with Edna's Best. The big difference is instead of have, having peat moss as a wetting agent, we've gone to cocoa core. So, Especially with houseplant growers these days, that seems to be a huge crave on the houseplants as well. So, <coughs> it'll come in a big two cubic foot bag. Um, I know I'm asking them to package it in a smaller one down the road for indoor use as well. So, hopefully, we would have like a little 12 quart bag in the future and then also a larger bag for outdoor container use. But that's one, I uh, leave your name. I'm, I just asked her again last week, is it ready yet? Is it ready yet? This is not a Sunnyside or EB Stone problem. This would be a state of Washington problem. So as soon as the Department of Ag gets through the application and checks all the sources and all their organic goodies, 
they will be released to the public. So the bags are in, the products in, we just can't ship it yet. So there you go. On the other side there, <coughs> I think is the finest liquid organic plant food. That's a little harder to find these days. It's typically granular, which there's nothing wrong with for the yard. Again, I think this gravitates for the houseplant people um, or container garden use. I don't want to mess with granular, put the gloves on, sprinkle the dusty fertilizer around. I want to put it in my watering can and water my foolish plants inside. I don't know, with pets and stuff, sometimes you put sprinkle the organic fertilizer on a house plant, they're going to come dig it up, eat it, make a mess, you're going to spill up my house, and then you'll be angry at me, right? So we got we got to go, uh, liquid's a much better way to go. This is what we're using now in our greenhouse, and frankly, the first batch that came in last fall, the staff bought it all. So again, that tells me, all right, we should probably get some more of this for our customers. I tried it on a whim, and then everyone's like, oh, dude, you got to start carrying that. So that's our go-to uh, house plant food these days as well. One spray that's new, <coughs> the, if you can see the little circle above the, the Rose RX on there, that's the picture of the straw hat man, Captain Jack, they call him. Uh, I'm not sure what he has to do with anything except for he's the, he's the, the symbol for all things natural organic from Bonite. So there's Captain Jack's copper, there's Captain Jack's this, there's Captain Jack's that. So now we have Rose RX 4-in-1. This is simply replacing our existing Rose RX 3-in-1, which is neem oil and organic insecticide, fungicide, everything you want. This would be totally safe to use on everything, period. From house plants, we use this in our house plant department again for all pest issues. Vegetable garden, rose garden, outside garden, the lawn, anywhere you want. Neem oil is a great spray that takes care of everything from mite, <laughs> disease, bug, all the above. And if you keep up on it, does an excellent job of repelling things you don't have to go the chemical route so um, I'll say a quick deal uh, pollinators are hugely important to me and a lot of our people around here and I think now the news is kind of making the public aware of the issues with bees and our local pollinators you know if you can avoid systemics and chemical sprays in the garden especially you're doing the baby bee, the bees a huge favor I mean that's the simple truth a product like this is totally bee safe but it's not just picking something like Rose RX to keep the bees safe it's also choosing the time of day to spray if I walk out in my garden at noon with the safest thing in the world and I start spraying my perennial garden with the bees buzzing everywhere everything that got neem oil on it's gonna die so I've still killed the bees even though I've used a safe product so get up early do it late when there's no bee activity and there's no residual or any kind of poison in that at all that's going to affect the bees so we avoid spraying flowers anyway um, but we would also pick the right time of the day to do it, and then we're going to be ha happy for the pollinators, okay? There's my pollinator speech for the day. Uh, the last one there, I put soil sulfur in. There's nothing new about that, but again, listen to you guys year to year, people that request things around here. We have typically really good acidic soil here in western Washington, but some folks get the sandy side of Marysville or another local community, and it's not quite acidic enough for blueberries, maybe the rhodes, azaleas, camellias, that kind of stuff struggling a little bit. This is something organic, uh, soil sulfur, we could add to add acidity in those specific areas. So I could use this to honestly change my hydrangea a little bit bluer if I wanted to, make it more acidic, or if I'm doing blueberries, again, something acid loving, this would ensure that I have the proper pH in the soil by adding a little bit of that sulfur in there too, okay? Now plants. So we'll breeze through this because I, what do I got, like 60 slides, so we'll go here pretty fast. Um, I'm here all day, so you can ask me questions after. And again, a lot of this <clears throat> is out there available. I'll mention some things that are in and some things you'll have to wait for um, as we go. Um, but you can always, you'll see at the end, leave your name and all that stuff on our wish list. We're happy to call and let you know when something does come in, if it's of interest to you as well. So first thing with roses, now for us, I get these in last year, so they're not available um, retail for a season till this year. But we, I'm a test for a rose test grower, so all these companies send me these roses. You don't even know they're here. I have them hiding out back. I feed them. I don't spray them because I want to see if Mrs. Jones tells me she's going to spray for black spot and she doesn't. How bad is it going to get here? You know, over the course of the year. So I can smell them. I can watch them bloom. I can see how they grow. 
um, but I'm most worried about the disease end of the rose thing. So these are all ones that we tried last year that made the cut. I guess we'll put it that way and said, yeah, we should probably have those in for our customers here in 2024. So knockouts um, is a huge group of roses. Maybe some of you have tried those. These are own root roses, so super hardy type shrub rose. This is not for cutting or bringing in house or super fragrant, but I want to look out and see color. I want to look out all summer long and see minimal maintenance and I want to see orange or yellow or pink or whatever my color is. They work great in pots as well, being own root. So knockouts, very popular in the southeast. I think they work very well in the Pacific Northwest. Um, they are very good disease resistant, but nothing up here is immune. With the wet weather we get, we have to watch a little bit of spray. But these were pretty clean left on their own. So um, some great colors out. I'm a total orange and yellow guy in my yard. So we finally don't have just pink and red, but we have some nice colors on knockouts. Uh, Easy Beezy is a great yellow. Um, and the orange glow is kind of the new orangish one. Um, those are the two that we added into our mix. We've got a pretty good chunk of knockouts back there in the rose area. Those are already in, ready to go. If we look at a couple of shrub roses, that's what the SH is. So these again would be for landscape color, but not as much for cutting and bringing inside. Um, I think Cosmic Cloud is one of the best roses that came out this year. If you like that plummy purple color, it's got cream on the bottom. But that is, it was indestructible last year. I had no issues at all. And heavy fragrance, which is very rare when we find a very good disease resistant rose and add superior fragrance. Um, that would be an excellent choice if you're looking for a hardy rose that's not crafted at all. So I could grow that up in the Arctic Circle, Eastern Washington, anywhere I want. I'm not gonna lose the plant like I will when, when they're grafted. Same exact thing with Pink Freedom. That's got some Rugosa rose in it parentage so I have that kind of loose old-fashioned flower great fragrance on it again but extremely clean that was one again if I want pink color I don't want to spray deadhead on all the rest of that stuff I'm gonna go for a shrub rose like one of those two uh, make me blush is the new hybrid tea so a little different color I haven't seen one kind of with that pastel pink and then glows yellow in the middle uh, that would have decent fragrance. That one we could cut and bring inside. Hybrid teas are going to be our long stem uh, single bud roses. So that's one to maybe consider if you have a little rose garden going for hybrid tea. Uh, most of the breeders, including David Austin always, but most of the other breeders are trying to copy David Austin these days if you ask me. So we have all these new roses that have that classic English kind of ruffled quarter rose look to them. So Miss Manners is a new tall grandiflora from Weeks Roses that we tried and liked. Um, that's a little taller grower, long stem again, we can cut them, but we would have multiple roses at the top of the bouquet, so usually three on the top of a stem. Uh, Power Puff Pink is the first Florabunda I've seen kind of go David Austin style. So that one, all the roses we have in, that one's back there leafing out, getting ready for its first bloom. Um, that would be pretty good fragrance again, but on a nice crisp pink. Uh, Floribunda is going to be a little bushier, and I'd have bouquets of roses again, kind of like a shrub rose in the garden. And I think that Quest for Zest got a great name. Um, that's another cream to yellow, real different color for us that I've seen. And that one smells like lemon, like lemon grass, lemon zest, lemon pledge. So if you like the lemony smell, that would be, that's an interesting fragrance on that one. Uh, the Drift Roses are always an option for folks, kind of like Knockouts. Drift is another series from Star that tends to sprawl out, well, not like a ground cover, just a little bit taller, but kind of like a ground cover for Rose. So if I'm trying to eat up an area and have some spread, and I don't want a deadhead again, these don't need to be deadheaded, they just bloom on top of themselves all summer, um, and I want to be pretty good for disease as well. We have a lot of colors, but Buttercream would be the new one this year. Um, to come out. These don't have a lot of smell, but again, if I'm looking out in my yard and I want to see flowers all summer, a, a, a series like Drift works very well for that. Then we have our English roses, right? The frankincense and myrrh and the hint of pear and all the funny fragrances. Um, David Austin always has got great new ones coming out every year. Um, you know, you need to watch a little bit for mildew and stuff up here if you're going to grow David Austin's. They're very easy to keep clean with neem oil. That's what we use here at the nursery to stay up on it. 
um, but you've got some new ones here for us this year. Bring Me Sunshine, I thought it was a great color. Uh, we, I think we still have a couple of those back there. And then Nye Bevan is another one, kind of looks yellow when it's going to open, and then it opens with all the whites and the creams in there as well. But the, you know, the worst smelling David Austin Rose is going to probably be 90% of the Tiber Teas back there. So um, even his light fragrance tends to be a little overpowering. Um, so those are very specific for fragrance and for color. We brought just, I put a couple new conifers on here. Macedonian fir, we got a few in. Um, you know, for the conifer lovers and people that like something a little different. Um, both Spanish fir and Macedonian fir, obviously not from around here, but super hot, drought tolerant options if you're looking for something a little different. Um, I've had a lot of customers again say, I love evergreens. I'm kind of have the cedars and the firs and all the stuff we have around here native covered. What can I plant that's a little bit different? So we're always looking for stuff that's cold hardy, that will live in our climate, but might have a little different texture for you. So Macedonian fir, we've got the, a couple of those up there in the, the, the conifer area. And then Spanish fir is always a real fun plant. If you haven't tried that, it's kind of a different looking conifer. I was happy we were able to find the blue columnar variety. So this would have bright red cones on it. It's really cool in the spring. But this is going to eat up height, but not eat up your yard side to side. So maybe an option if you've got a hot, well-drained uh, spot, you're looking for a specimen conifer is a little different. We could still put Christmas lights in if they do that in Spain too, right? So we could de we could decorate it kind of Christmassy if we want in the holidays. But that's a, that's a pretty sweet tree. If you look at Spanish firs out there, they're kind of stiff and prickly a little bit, but they've got an interesting needle on them, a little different than some of the evergreens. Uh, we just got these new uh, pinpoints in this week. Uh, this is a little Port Orford cedar, uh, something we would find native down more like the, the Pacific Coast, Oregon, Northern California, um, not so much up in Washington. Uh, but this is something we want to keep dry. So if you're looking for a container specimen, you can see on the door there, but I don't have to water very much and stays very narrow. It's got a really nice blue color. Uh, that may be a little conifer to, to, to consider for the garden or uh, for, for the containers as well. Really cool new uh, miniature Norway spruce. Uh, we did get a few of these in already uh, from Isley. So if you know Norway spruce, sometimes it gets a little big. You know, you get a weeping one and you can kind of train it and let it do what it wants. You can almost grow them as a ground cover, stake them up a little bit, get them get a mounding shape out of it. This one would be a fraction of the growth habit. So if you're looking for hot sun, super drought tolerant again, uh, something I can cite for a cool conifer specimen. That would be low and very small. This might be like two feet tall, three feet wide down the road long term versus like six feet tall, eight feet wide kind of thing on a regular Norway, weeping Norway spruce. Uh, last one, or the, the, the golden child there, so that's a lot of yellow. If you know Arborvitae, um, you know, not the little green soldiers we make fences out of, but the opposite, the little round ones. I have these along my patio kind of for a little edging, um, edging plant. I can shear them, but this is one Monrovia found just last year. We, we, had, we had a few of these in already too. Um, the first yellow one I've seen that won't burn in the summertime. So this is one we have little tiny growth habit it might end up like a two foot by three foot kind of size uh, but it would have a really bright yellow frosting of new growth on it which adds a little bit of interest and we can have it in full sun again the last little conifer there is some blue so Isley tends to spend like 20 years our conifer collector nurseries breeding things they test and they grow and they move it around the country and see how it does this is finally the first part of what they call their blues collection. Uh, blue spruce is a little prickly, loves the heat, super cold hardy. But I think a lot of people that buy blue spruce get green spruce with a little tiny bit of blue on the outside because it's not a real good cultivar. This is stuff that would be that bright for all eternity. So if either I wanted a little miniature blue spruce tree, I would look for that Monty. Or if I was looking for a little round kind of globe shaped spruce that's bright blue I would I would look for that moonstone those are two plants we have a handful in we'll keep getting a few they're just brand new so it's hard to go buy even five of them they usually give us like two or three at a time kind of thing but super slow growing 
um, and certainly something to consider if you like the blue. That's a great color for the garden. A uh, couple new Japanese maples. Um, I think I still have a little bit of both of these. The maple collectors have been pillaging us here for a couple weeks since the maple started showing in. Um, Alpine Sunrise, a great little red dwarf. Um, we do have some of those out there are still available, ready to go. And Gold Digger has been the one everybody's been wanting. It's got gold, orangey bark, little smaller growers, got great foliage color on it. I know there's some more of these because I, I bought one yesterday, so uh, there's a few of those back there as well. You have one less because I took one home, right? And then coral bark. So I'm always looking for who's got anybody got a big coral bark maple in their yard? So the regular coral bark gets huge. I think most people see it in a nursery and again picture that dwarf thing that I'll just keep like six feet or eight feet tall and it'll look great. You know coral bark will get 20-25 feet when we get an old specimen and it's a great tree but I think a lot of people are looking for that bark color and something smaller. So we're always trying to or I'm always trying to find some dwarf coral barks that hold up really well that don't get as big. So this year we had a little bit of these in the fall. We'll continue to get this one in. Now we have one called Little Sango. And there's some other good ones out there too that are dwarf. But now I've got kind of more of a, a six to eight foot version of coral bark maple. It's not gonna get super huge and outgrow my garden space. On the other one there is a birch. And I got a handful of these. I've always liked birch. But I was stri striking last year when I saw it leaf out and do the season. You can see that picture is very gold. It's almost orange in the spring when they're leafing out right now. But that's a shrub birch. This is not a birch that's gonna get 50 feet tall like typical birch trees. This would be something I could put maybe a little wetter area because birch doesn't mind some water. But I would have some cool bark on it in a shrubby form. But now I add some cool foliage color. So that's, I think, a, if you like birch and you, even if, again, if you, especially if you got a little maybe wetter area in the yard that might be a good little choice for a shrub that's kind of a little miniature tree we have a couple left of that new red bud back there still called midnight express so if you know red bud these are just swelling their flower buds right now in april and they bloom beautiful flowers on bare wood then the foliage comes out we've got those little heart-shaped leaves this one will be super dark, so I want like dark, deep purple foliage with that hot pink flower to start it off. So that may be a fun, manageable size kind of flowering tree if you're looking for something a little bit different. Redbud gets great fall color uh, as well for the fall. Um, that's the best variegated dogwood I've seen. Um, this is one we have in. Um, I've tried a lot of variegated dogwoods. It's going to have a great flower like all dogwoods will. This is a Korean variety. But if I was looking to get a cool foliage on it too, uh, that's the number one rated variegated dogwood these days. I spent some time trying to find that for our uh, customers for this year. Um, not quite as big a growing as typical dogwood, which is nice, I think, for most homeowners. But certainly, we're always pretty in bloom dogwood, but now I have something that's going to look really attractive to me with the foliage and not worry about the flower. The nice thing with variegated dogwoods too is in the fall when we have those two-tone leaves, a lot of times you're going to get hot pink with red, you know, two-tone fall color, which is awful pretty when we get towards October, November. Now, I put a bunch of shrubs and perennials on here, so we'll go kind of fast. Um, Angel's Blush, we'll have in a couple weeks. That's a new Abelia, if you know Abelia. That smells good and always gives us nice flower power like in August, September. But this is the best variegated one I've seen. This is an example from those first couple slides where... Monrovia had one called Silver Anniversary, but the issue was is I got a green branch every once in a while, another green branch. So this has been selected out that for no reversion. It had very little green ever come out on it. So that maybe if you're looking for the superior variegated form of Abelia, look for that Angel's Blush here pretty quick. We'll have a bunch of these in uh, from Monrovia Growers. I have these new butterfly bush coming up here in a couple weeks. Um, if you know butterfly bush, the problem in Washington is they banned them. They made them illegal as a noxious weed because they seed everywhere. And I would agree on um, being a hiker up on, in the Baker River area. It's pretty bad um, where the homeowners planted the old varieties and they've seeded and taken over most of the native areas on the creeks and the rivers up there. So all the butterfly bush we get now 
they don't even call it butterfly bush anymore. They call it nectar bush or summer lilac, which always makes me laugh. But it's still a butterfly bush. Fragrant pollinators, butterflies, always happy. But now we've taken seeds out of it. So these are all seedless varieties that we're able to offer customers again that you don't have to worry about seedlings all over the garden. So summer bird midnight blue, you'll have summer bird pink, summer bird white, summer bird red, there'll be other colors. Um, but most people are going to gravitate towards that purple blue is usually the color they like. Uh, Mr. Hinckley's got a new Catoni Aster coming in through Monrovia here. We'll have that here in a couple of weeks as well. So that's a little different um, than typical Catoni Aster. If you know that, or some people call it Cotton Easter, always makes me smile. Um, that's a pretty vigorous ground cover, and they're shrubby Catoni Asters. There's all kinds of these. I don't know that I've ever seen one like this because this is not for bloom, it's not for berry, it's for Edward Scissorhands topiary. So if you're into making cool shapes, you want a little balls and you want this and you want that, that's one I could get super OCD on and go out and get my scissors out and make any kind of thing I want to out of. So super dense, great foliage on it, but that's, that's what we're getting it for. It's kind of something fun and foliage plant. Um, the coolest thing I saw with it, Don, uh, was a hedge and I'm not talking about a hedge. I'm talking about a hedge Like it looked like a cedar fence that had leaves on it It was that narrow and somebody had just clipped it nice and tidy it was like that's actually pretty cool If you have the time that would be one that would take a little time uh, Banana split is one I picked up from my yard. They gave us samples last year. That's a cool part of my job I get free plants once in a while uh, But banana splits probably the best variegated winter Daphne I've seen to date if I'm going for foliage color, unbelievable. It has the best best variegation of anyone I've seen. This is again Monrovia growing thousands of winter Daphnes and luckily they're smart and walked out. Wait a minute, what is that one doing? They pulled it aside and propagated it now for a number of years and got a really consistent plant. Um, I think that's got a great name. That's what it looks like, a big old banana split. So fragrant. I honestly, purposely, some Daphnes are not super hardy. If you've had Daphnes, you're shaking your head like, yeah, I've lost too many in my yard too. So I took one home, never planted it. It sat in my yard out in the shrub bed where I was going to plant it the entire winter, and it looks perfect. So I had no defoliation, no dieback, no frost damage. So I'm like, yes, I think I'm going to add it to my garden now. It'll get planted, but we'll also start carrying it for our customers. I think they're telling me the first batch of this is going to be sometime in April. It'll be here pretty quick if you like Daphne's. I think that may be a little easier one to grow than, than some of the other winter varieties. Um, anybody, anybody trying the Dyer Vela? Di I didn't know how to say that one. Dyer Velas, Dyer Vias, you've seen it. I've seen it pronounced a few different ways. So this is a honeysuckle relative that grows like a shrub. And I've kind of gotten into them the last few years because I think they're pretty close to indestructible. If I wanted easy foliage, great fall color, has a little yellow kind of honeysuckle like flower, it's not smelly or really showy in flower, you're buying it for the foliage. And a lot of these varieties are going to be bright orange in the spring or red. Now there's even darker reddish purple ones out there. Um, it's a pretty useful plant if you're looking to fill an area and not mess with it at all. This is not something with bugs or disease. It does shade, it does light shade, it does sun, it does everything. So that may be something to look at as these come in and leaf out. Um, we've had a couple of customers, we've had these in it for a few years, but I think there's better and better foliage colors coming out now uh, for options for our gardens as well. Uh, Father Gilla, this is a new one. We've got a, that's going to have a fun name, Legends of the Small. So that one, another proven winter plant they, they gave a fancy name to. Um, that's a, Father Gila is a little plant, so fun, I wish more people grew it because it's a nice shrub. Um, fragrant little white flowers in like May, June, incredible fall color. It's not native here, but I honestly think it looks more native than most of the shrubs would probably carry. If you put it in the yard, you'd be like, oh, that blends in perfectly with my green belt, but it's got a really nice flower, and again, top five of any plant we carry fall color that's got sweet color for fall uh, heptacodium is a plant we're getting into a little bit more uh, this is the seven suns flower we've had one down the arboretum down in uh, down in Everett for a while that I've watched mature and it's a pretty cool plant um, this will have like peanut butter smelling really cool flowers in the later summer uh, but it's got really good fall color really cool bark 
and I think they get better, better, tidier shape now. It's kind of a little bit of I'll do whatever I want plant, the ones I've seen over the years, but now the new ones like Temple of Bloom would make a really nice, I think, yard specimen tree. A smaller tree, not super big, um, but it's got something going in all three seasons. That's kind of a little different plant. I feel like something a little different. Um, I've always been a sucker for old fashioned Rosa Sharon or Althea. Reminds me of my grandma and my mother always had these two. Uh, this is a plant, <clears throat> again, that probably got a little big sometimes for people's yards, a little bushy. It's always going to bloom when nothing else is in flower, July and August, if you're looking for summer flowers. But I love this pillar series. So now I've got something that might grow 8, 9, 10 feet tall, but it's only going to be 3 feet wide. So it's a great specimen shrub for some summer bloom. And it looks just like our Hawaiian hibiscus, but these are hardy hibiscus. So no yellows, no orange, none of those hot colors like we get down in the, in the tropics. But a lot of pastels. The pillar series now, this red one's brand new, but now we have purple, we have white, and we have the red. So we've got a nice mix of colors now we can choose from for a, for a narrow Rose of Sharon. Um, we're also, for the customers around here, we, we try to listen to you. But I think everybody's freaked out about what zone are we in and what our deathly heat summers are doing here in the future. So, um, you know, if you have good drainage, I'm going to say that with some, with the two plants like this for sure. This is not something I'm going to put in my garden. If I got clay, if I got water issues in the winter, you're going to rot it. It's going to live one year and you're going to have to replace something else the next year. But if I have hot, dry, rockery, well-drained soil and I do not want to water in the summer, more people are gravitating towards things like rosemary, lavender, Mediterranean style plants. And that would totally be the same here with the Hesperallos. So really cool flowers, super hardy. This is not something desert tropical by any means. They go way down in temperature. I beat rhododendrons and the rest of that around here, honestly, for cold hardiness. But I have to control the water. If I'm out there watering my sprinkler system three times a week in the summer, you're going to crash these out because they're going to get too wet. So if you're on the opposite and you want to go high and dry, uh, these will start rolling in probably first part of May. We get these up from Monrovia, um, and they're plenty hardy, but they're kind of fun too. You know, it'll be something kind of fun to tuck in a pot with other succulents, or again, put it out in the hot, sunny spot in the yard where you don't have to do much maintenance. Now, one plant there's getting far too much of is hydrangea, um, and I'll be the first one to admit that. I teach a specific hydrangea class. I could probably put 50 on there now that we carry. We got to start cutting down a little bit. But every year I'm a sucker for hydrangeas, so I go to shows and I'm like, wow, that is really cool. And I don't have anything like that. I'll take it. So this year, Eclipse is the plant of the year. Um, it was all over the garden show in Seattle. Um, we have a lot of people who have already left their name. The first batch will be here in May. We have like 300 coming, so we'll have plenty of them over the whole. May, June, July time frame. There'll be about 50 coming in every other week. Um, I've never seen one with this dark of foliage. When it leaves out, it is black purple and it's got that red with white center flower. Um, that's a compact plant. It's reblooming. Um, again, not you guys, but a plant show for me, um, for buyers and, and plant geeks, what's new in the trade. This was the number one plant rated in every show I went to last year, all, all around the Northwest. So. Um, it might be something to consider. I took out a hydrangea in my garden last month and I played taps when I put it in the compost, but I'm putting one of those in instead now. So um, I thought it was a pretty, pretty sweet variety coming down the pipeline. On the other side there is Fairy Tale Bride. Now this is the old wood blooming hydrangea, so I want to make sure that's clear. This is not a repeat bloomer like we would have on most of the modern hydrangeas. But I've never seen anything like this. You can see it in the pot there. It actually weeps a little bit. So I had some. I had a demo of this last year where they had it in a hanging basket. And I was like, is that a hydrangea? I thought it was some weird new annual they were growing. He's like, yep, put one in a hanging basket. So it comes up and then kind of hangs down a little bit in these layered lace cap flowers. It's a pretty cool plant. So again, we're going to have a few. There's not a lot of these and they're not going to be here for a little while still. Uh, but if you're trying to make a statement and you're like, I got everything out of the sun and I want something different, that is something different. So that would be a fun shrub to grow that kind of has a different growth habit. Or I think for a container or even a hanging basket would be kind of fun, something a little different. 
Um, I'm not much of a drinker, but I do like gin and tonics in the summer on occasion, so I had to buy grin and tonic. It just, the, na the name got to me on that one. Um, sometimes I buy things just for the names. Like, all right, that's a great name. we got to have that around. Uh, this is as good as hydrangeas, any. It's a little different color. You can see uh, this is going to leaf out lime green and turn a little whitish, and I'm not getting any other color but that. So it's kind of a little different. I was kind of picturing the squeeze of my lime and my gin and tonic, right? So um, that's one we'll have in here probably about a month or so. Most of the hydrangeas are not going to be until like mid-May or so. Um, but certainly something a little different if you like those colors. I didn't know if I was going to like the lime green and the dark green leaves. It actually, we had a different one in last year that, that, that looked really cool. And it is kind of something fun for the summertime. So that's a small repeat bloomer. All the modern good things with hydrangeas. But just a totally different color. Uh, Kitty Hawk is the brand new one from Monrovia Seaside Serenade series. So they're all really good hydrangeas. Um, this is the new one. It's got more of that star-shaped petal, if you can see on the picture there. I can play with my color around here. This would be the blue to purple tones in our soil. If I grow it in a pot or I want to add some alkalinity to that area, I can keep it pink to red. I can play with my color a little bit. Um, but again, there that whole series is noted for Super compact growth habit, no brainer pruning because they bloom on new wood and old wood, um, and really heavy flower count. So this is one, again, probably two, three weeks we'll have the first batch of the, this new one in as well. Uh, Let's Dance is the series we try to get some of the new ones in every year from Proven Winners. I'm never quite sure what Let's Dance has to do with hydrangeas, but I'll let them name their own plants, I guess. So they've got some good ones out there. The new one this year is called Lovable. Big, huge flower on a big, thick stem. Um, it's one, again, we can play with the color in our soil a little bit. But dwarf habit, repeat blooming, kind of all those same traditional traits that we like on all the new uh, modern type hydrangeas. The new PG there is called Moon Rock. You know, and that looks a little like limelight to me, but that's from a different breeder, so we gave it a try. Um, this is a big flower, maybe a little bigger than some of the limelights I've seen. Um, <clears throat> but if you know PG's, this is the opposite style of hydrangea. We will put this out in hot all day sun. They bloom all through the summer. They're always going to open that lime green white, and then I'm going to get pinks into them over the summer until they turn like a kind of an orchid color towards fall. They're not going to go blue or purple like our round ones or mop heads. But this is one we'll get a lot of flowers on and all new wood bloom. So I like PGs because they take sun and we don't have to worry about how we prune them. We can really cut them back if we want to and keep them smaller. And I always get immediate flower back. I don't have to wait a year like old hydrangeas. Okay. A couple of things that are a little different. Sweet Spire is another plant I wish more people grew. If you haven't tried Itea, that's a great shrub. Um, turns beautiful red in the fall. It's got fragrant white flower spikes on it. The new one's called Fizzy Mizzy. We get a couple different ones of these in. Um, but I like Itea for the fall color, the summer fragrance. And this is one we can have a little bit of wet on too. So this is not one we need to worry about so much high and dry. This one will take a little bit more moisture, especially over the winter months. Um, but certainly a nice sizable uh, shrub you can, you can consider adding. And then now with the heat up here, I never thought I'd say this 10 years ago, I would have said don't ever plant crepe myrtles up here, but I'm probably going to plant one this year in my yard because I think we get warm enough now in the summer that we get bloom on them. My problem was they always grew fine. They get great fall color, cool bark on them, everything, but we just weren't hot enough like the southeast or the eastern seaboard to get them to flower. I go to Portland, south of Portland, I see them lining streets, that extra five 10 degrees in the summer they're absolutely beautiful and bloom in the summer um, I can get a lot of colors but now we're getting a bunch in and I see them bloom here at the nursery and I see them blooming in yards I live in Everett all over town these days so this new series um, is a longer bloom season these will repeat flower the summer lasting series we'll have all these in here pretty quick probably mid-may to early June these will be a little smaller growers still great fall color really cool bark in the winter but I can pick pink or red or white or purple or different colors in that series and have the crepe myrtle bloom that I want to get uh, immediately. This new Mahonia we'll have in the fall 
Um, this is one that re they'll release in the fall. This blooms in like October, November, December. It's a great one for hummingbirds. Um, I would put it in a pot. I've tried Mahonias like these that are not native Mahonias. These are all cultivars from Asia. The problem is rabbits around here. The rabbits eat mine down in one day whenever I plant one. So I got smart and just said, sweet, I'll enjoy it in a container. And so if I have part sun, part shade, I'm looking for a cool plant to grow as a specimen in there. That may be something fun to try. We've always carried Soft Caress, if you ever tried that one. Um, that's one the rabbits like too. Um, but we put that in a pot. We get the flowers for the hummingbirds in the fall, the early winter time. That's got a little more uniform habit. This one's going to be funky flow. You're going to have some fun shape, a little different texture, but still that same nice yellow flower um, to keep the pollinators happy in the fall. Uh, we have the Swan Lake Mock Orange in already. Um, I, I can't, I'm, I'm telling you the truth because I smelt it last year. If I open it like the strongest can of grape soda that I've ever smelt in my life, that's what that smells like. It's a really cool fragrance. So it smells like a Welch's grape soda, like, oh wow, that's exactly what it smells like. Um, so that's a smaller Mock Orange. These are again, not the old fashioned huge. 10-12 mock orange plants that we used to be stuck with um, now are like six feet tall and these will bloom like May maybe late April May and early June time frame um, but Philadelphus is a cool old-fashioned shrub again just another kind of modern modern twist on it the Swan Lake uh, always like nine barks um, that's a great foliage plant that it blooms it's happy for pollinators um, we had a couple of these. I think we still have a man. I got more coming too. But Bailey's always introduces great nine bark varieties for garden use, I think. Bright foliage colors, nice flower, really cool peely bark. Super, super hardy. I've got two, three of these now. I just added another one into a new garden last year at my place. Um, I think it's a plant that looks great all year. It does lose its leaves, but it still looks cool in the wintertime with the structure. Honeycomb is the best yellow one I've seen to date. We've tried a lot of yellows that have bright gold or yellow foliage in the summer, but they get a little tired and burnt with the heat when we get to August. This is one I demoed last year and let it sit out, watered it of course, but let it sit out in a pot and I wanted to see if it burnt or not and it did not. So this will be the yellow one we'll be carrying uh, moving forward, the new honeycomb. Uh, lots of new small lilacs in. So we have Dream Cloud right there, which we have in, and we have Baby Kim, which came in too. So I love lilacs. Um, my problem with French lilacs is the height, the size. They get awful big, more like a tree down the road, and it's not something you can really walk out with a chainsaw every year and prune. It's just never going to look quite right. So we kind of want to let them do their thing. If I'm looking for a fragrance, the same color schemes, bloom, all the same time, I'm going to search out some of these new hybrid lilacs like these two here. I might be like five feet tall on dream cloud and look like a big shrub not trunks with foliage on top kind of thing but i want a big shrub lilac that blooms real heavy baby kim's the smallest one i've seen on any lilac yet that's a miniature version of an old a korean lilac called miss kim so i might have something like three feet tall on that so lots of lavender flower great fragrance but a very very small plant we're also going to get a little Vitex in. This will be a little later, probably 1st of June or so. Um, that's got a great name. I love Queen Bee because that's what that plant is to me. It's about pollinators. That's a lot of flower on Vitex in the summer. That blooms a long time and it, bees love it. So it's a, it's a really hardy plant. Not something you see around here, I think, quite as much. More in the Midwest, again, some. But it's certainly something I consider, especially, I'm gonna probably pop one in the center of my pollinator garden and use it as the shrub and have all my other goodies around it for the summer. But I think it might be a good option for pollinators. If you're looking for something that blooms heavy and a long time, uh, you might you might think about the, uh, think about the Vitex. <coughs> now, a few perennials. How are we doing? We're going to go fast here. We're going to be here way too long. So Yarrow's brand new, like Skysail series. We'll have that in a few colors if you like kind of the butterfly attractors. Um, Achillea is a great sun, drought tolerant perennial. Uh, those will be just a couple weeks. They're going to start blooming here. Um, I've loved Hyssop. 
Some people call that hummingbird mint, agastache, agastache, a bunch of different names. Um, that's to me, I think one of the best perennials. If you got hot sun and well-drained soil, that used to be a quick flash in the pan. But there's so many good ones now that bloom the entire summer till frost. Mine started in June. And I have flowers and pollinators and hummingbirds happy all the way until November. Once we get a hard frost, they'll go down for the winter. Then we pop back up next year. So there's guava lava. That's a fun name. We have rosy posy. I don't know if I like that one. And we have peachy keen. So a lot of these will be in here probably first part of May or so. We would start having a lot of these new perennials in for summer. Some really fun new ajugas. Um, this whole bird series they did, Fancy Finch, the Feathered Friends Collection, they call it, which is kind of fun. We just got the, the Cordial Canary in yesterday out there. It's got really cool yellow foliage. They're in bloom with those flowers on there right now. But we'll continue to get these in as we go into the season. Bugle weed or ajuga is a great ground cover. If I have like morning sun or shade and I'm looking to kind of plant something to fill up some area and keep the weeds down, uh, that may be something fun to kind of consider. There's some great ajugas out there, but I thought this, this feathered friends collection was kind of fun. There's always a new Alstromeria is another one that I probably 10 years ago would have said, ah, I treat it as an annual. But I think a lot of people have had these live year to year that grows from a little bulb. And as long as we plant it in an area that drains well and gets good sun, I think you're going to have pretty good luck, uh, pretty good luck with those. Uh, alliums, lots of new alliums coming out. This new one will be here in a couple weeks called Bubble Bath. But if you know alliums in the onion family, sometimes a good insect deterrent. These are again great for pollinators and bees when they're flowering. And if you have young sons like me, they make perfect like t-ball whipping baseball bat practice. You'll probably decapitate all mine again this year. Uh, like astilbees, uh, we're going for foliage color. There's a lot of good astilbees out there. The one I had last year is finally available this year called Dark Side of the Moon. That'll be here in a couple weeks as well as this new Mighty Chocolate Cherry. So if you know a stilby, they're always pretty in flower, but what am I left with when the bloom's done? I just got foliage, right? And it was all green. So these are going to be dark purple. So I'm going to look out in the summer, I get a little bit of sun on them, I'm going to see a really attractive foliage plant when they're not in bloom for my kind of woodland part sun garden again. Then more Crocosmia, that is the new one this year, That the Dark Fires, that's got a cool little color around it if you like different Crocosmia. Those will probably be here about June, that one's a little bit later. Lopsa Baptisia, um, I was always thinking that was just a wildflower, frankly, and you had blue to choose from, but now I think we've got eight colors coming in here from a, a grower over in Walla Walla with those beautiful Baptisia. Uh, those will be here in a few weeks as well. Um, that's a big specimen perennial for hot sun and Baptisia honestly does some wonderful things for the soil. That's a great thing to help break up clay a little bit. Pretty good sense of root system and a great nitrogen fixer, kind of like peas. So that's a, one that will breed some life into your soil if you try a little bit of those once in, once in a while. Lots of Dianthus, old school carnations. Um, again, they just keep coming out with more of these. Um, I put this in my article last week a little bit in the paper as well. Um, some new ones coming down the pipeline, but lots of Dianthus are in. There's more of these continue to come. The biggest thing with these again would be drought tolerant. They're evergreen. If I have if I have well drained soil, I'm going to have a really easy, tidy little border plant or rockery plant that blooms a long time. Old carnations were a flash in the pan. All this new stuff I'm going to have like five months of color out of. They start now, and as long as I deadhead a little bit, I'm going to have flower power through the, through the summer months. So the great, great one for the sun. The new bleeding heart, the titanium. So that's, you can't tell in that picture, but pure white flower, and that foliage is going to be a real blue color, which I think is pretty cool for bleeding heart. Those will be a couple weeks still before they come in. <coughs> but if you like the bleeding heart, same situation for growing them in that woodlandy part shade, part sun garden. Uh, that's a much shorter one. If you like the white flower with the blue foliage, I think it might be kind of fun. Uh, one new daylily we picked up this year is See You Tomorrow. I was like, why'd you call it that? And then I read up on it and tried it out. It's because the flowers last five times as long. So that's the reason they bred that yellow one. 
instead of daylilies opening for a day and then another one opens I got five days out of every flower so it lasts a lot longer if you like them like them blooming couple new cone flowers there's always way too many cone flowers out these days uh, this is a new series we picked up uh, called Sun Seekers especially the rainbow so compact heavy bloom on all the series but I'd like that rainbow I tried one last summer because it was multiple colors I thought it was pretty cool the flowers came up and opened and started changing this one opened that one opened and you had kind of a kaleidoscope of colors on the same cone flower which I thought was pretty sweet uh, that's one that got added to my yard last fall and then the doubles I'm always brutally honest I always thought these were kind of abominations of nature it was like that is not a cone flower I am sorry but they're getting better I don't I don't have one yet maybe I'll get that orange one I like uh, one of these years I'll try one in my own yard but they are kind of fun if you like different sun perennials take the heat great for pollinators nothing changes but this deluxe double scoop now they used to be double scoop cone flowers but now they put the word deluxe in front of it and it is better than the old ones the biggest difference is these are not as leggy they bloom much better and much more compact they did some breeding because that was the issue I think with the original double scoops was they got like one or two flowers and they got real tall and leggy and that was pretty much it this is going to be a little different creature uh, for the new series we just finished with hellebore so I won't spend a lot of time on that I hate to tell you if you didn't get your hellebore we'll see you in the fall because this is a plant we can't get much now through the summertime I think there's still a few out there if you want to do some hellebore grabbing but there won't be anything and not just us but I think every nursery for quite a while this is something you'll be back September October and then through next winter um, all the new hellebores whether it's those or some of these new carnival series and European series great flowers the biggest difference to me these days is the foliage you're going to get marbling variegation so when they're not blooming here for the next six months till next winter it looks cool in the yard you still got them evergreen nothing changes they're drought tolerant easy all the rest but i think the foliage is a little better uh hookerellas i spy um that's kind of that the hookera hookera crosses well i think we might have got these in this week finally but if you're looking for kind of that evergreen perennial like hookeras and hookerellas are um, that's got nice flower power and attractive foliage if you're looking for a little border plant um, that one we would want to do kind of that part sun part shade again not not all day sun um, and I'm a total hosta addict this is one of my favorite plants so my mission is always to find the hosta of the year every year till I die someday um, <laughs> and so I go back 25 years and we don't ever have all these in at once um, because we don't have room for that many hostas at once but every week more hostas show up so if you're a hosta collector and you like really cool hostas I think we got as good a selection as anybody dream queen was the new one here that's the hosta of the year for 2024 so I did have some this week if we're out we'll get some more uh, my staff is down in Monrovia so we're able to bring in a dozen at a time kind of thing um, but there's some pretty cool hostas out there and that would be the, the brand new one proven winners is also adding some and we decided to grab some of theirs this year so um, if you've tried like Empress Wu I think was the first one it's supposed to have the biggest leaves of any hosta that exists uh, we now we have Wu La La which is the variegated one um, these two new ones this year I like blue so we picked up above the clouds that's a massive blue leafed specimen hosta that's not a little we took it in my container that would probably be a three foot tall five foot across plant as it gets old and old down the road um, we it's always fun to say we right um, so that's another one from them we had in uh, that's got a little more texture to me it's a great yellow one it's a lower had all kinds of kind of twist and turn on the foliage I thought was kind of fun I might have to grab one of those too from my garden uh, if you like Def Leppard, I like, used to like Def Leppard back in the 80s, so I had to get Pyromania, you know what that is, if you know Def Leppard, the old band. Uh, but that's one they've got a new series of, um, of our red hot pokers. So there's orange blades, there's red, there's yellow, all the typical hot poker colors. But again, longer bloom time, kind of ever blooming red hot pokers instead of one big flower and I'm done for the year. That's another great hot, dry kind of perennial that we can plant in full sun good drain soil 
Uh, we just got this in yesterday. The wee one showed up. So that is the smallest lavender on market. If I'm looking for hardy English lavender and I want a tiny little mound for my garden and I don't want any of the old stuff that gets a little bigger, I would look real hard at the wee one. We just got 40 of them in. So that one we do have back there. Um, that's a pretty flower and again, as long as I have good drainage, good sun, I'm gonna have happy lavender. The Monardas, uh, bee balms are always some of my favorites. Um, they go for mildew resistant. I'll tell you, I've tried most of all these Monardas in my own garden. Um, doesn't mean immune, watch the mildew always on bee balm up here in the wet springs. If you can spray them early, you'll have clean plants in the summer. If you let them get mildew, you'll probably be stuck for the year. They still bloom, they still grow, but I don't think anybody likes mildew in their garden. So, um, Some of these new ones, I'm not sure what upscale, and unless another fancy plant name. Um, there's all kinds of new colors. You'll see these are all in series, so I can have upscale, pink, red, purple, white, all the colors. And then the Be Mine series is another one out this year too. A couple of perennial grasses. I don't have hair, so I don't do the bad hair day anymore. But Bad Hair Day is a really fun little Ophiopogon. We've got these in there. Um, it's just a little green mound that's got all kinds of funky twists and turns to it. They were kind of fun. I thought for container gardens, I might have probably try them this year when I do my containers for summer. Uh, that's a fun little evergreen grass. And then I love Mondo grass. I have a lot of it in my shade garden for a ground cover. But this is Blackbeard's one. It's just going to get taller. So if I didn't want like that tall of black mondo grass but i'm looking for like twice the height that would be one that just gets a little little bit bigger a little bit taller uh ito peonies we have some in now um there'll be more of these coming um there's always great new itos in does anyone have ito peonies yet so i've got too many now i'll probably buy another one this year um this is a plant i think most gardeners should have it's not cheap um, I wish they'd sell them small. The problem is I remember buying my first one in Canada for like $35 in a gallon and that was wholesale. But it took five years before I even got a flower on it. So they're giving you instant gratification. You're going to pay 100 120 bucks, but you're getting a big, huge plant to start with. Um, I think these are the coolest peonies they, they do these days. This is our tree peony meets bush peony. Huge flower, fragrance on some of them really cool colors they get a lot of the colors we can't have in our perennial type peonies yellows even and close to orange i've got a couple that are damn near orange not not construction cone orange but i was like yep yeah, that does look orange i like it so there's quite a few there's always new ones of these coming out everybody's got a series of ito peonies these days um the oompa loompa was kind of a fun one and toot sweets a new pink uh, we have a whole probably eight more new ones coming in. These are just a couple weeks out. I'd say by the end of April, we're going to have all these in. You'll see them out, um, out on the peony area there for sale. Uh, but certainly look on our website. There's other colors you want or something. Leave your name because they go pretty quick. This is not something I can get 10 or 20 of. It's like five of that, five of this, five of that. And that's about all we can find for the year kind of thing. Uh, these were supposed to come yesterday for the class and didn't quite make it, but this is a new uh, dwarf herbaceous peony series we'll probably have in a few more weeks now. She said, I'm sorry, they're too small, you can't have them yet, which is fine because we don't want small plants in here. Um, this is a new series that was bred in the Netherlands. It's all European series, London, Paris, Madrid, um, named after for the colors. But if I'm doing a really tidy herbaceous peony and especially in a container this may be a good series for you to look at the bloom is a little bit longer than typical herbaceous peonies a couple of them do have a light fragrance to them but nice flowers on a really dwarf uh, compact peony for sure uh, kaleidoscope is one of the new jacobs ladders maybe a little bigger than some um, this is something i have in my own garden because i enjoy the foliage and the flower to me is a nice bonus um, so nice blue flowers on a really good variegated foliage, but I'm going to get a pretty good chunk of height out of that one. Almost looks like a little mini shrub versus a perennial. Um, I know mine didn't really ever go brown this winter. If you're getting a lot of these Jacobs ladders, even in a cold winter, they'll keep their structure and color. And I barely had to pull any brown leaves off of mine. They've already flushed out for spring and off we go for another year kind of thing. 
Um, I've always loved Spider War too. The Tratoscantias. Um, this, the bonus with this would be Bloom Time. You know, I've got gold one foliage ones in my own garden and a couple others. But this is one I'm going to have six months of flower power out of instead of three. So if I like spider ward and I want to let that naturalize in one of my perennial gardens, that would give me a lot more flower power with that new variety, Brainstorm. Um, always cool new Rudbeckias out. A uh, gold blitz would be the new Rudbeckia. Um, you know, there's a lot of good ones these days. That was the new breeder's favorite. Again, for heavy flower count, that one probably blooms a little more than some of the other ones we see. I certainly am not going to be honest, we're going to go home and rip out all my gold shroom and the other ones I have and replace it with this just yet. I'll probably see how it goes for a few years. But if I'm buying one, a new one, and I didn't have one, that may be one to consider versus the older ones because, again, just the longer bloom time on it. Uh, flocks as well. These are summer flocks, so just about a month away before we'll have them. So this will give me the fragrance and this new sweet series again a little better for mildew resistance if you've grown flocks the issue with that's always been a little, little bit of mildew these saxifrages will be fall so this is a whole new series we demoed last year and we'll have these in again for fall so this is the dancing pixie series there's a whole bunch of them in color options and foliages you can see them so this is a fall blooming plant um, right on the hardy line up here. I, I planted three and mine came back already and they're growing and I was happy I was okay if they didn't come back because I was kind of curious if they would this year uh, But this is one to tuck in pots or very small areas in your shade garden This is not a plant. We want to have Sun. This is a, a definitely a, a shade minimal Sun plant um, It's gonna have sweet little foliage all through the season, but we would have our flower display late august september october and early november we would have a real late bloom on these on these sacks of french a couple clematis will be coming in tie-dye is an old school one that i finally found again um, those will be here in a couple weeks before we have vine class i'll teach here i think it's two weeks from today um, so we'll have tie-dyes in before the vine class i hope um, poseidon is a new one of the boulevard clematis so kind of the modern clematis if I have a pot or I have like a six foot trellis and I don't need 12, 15, 20 feet of vine down the road, a lot of people are gravitating towards this Boulevard series that Monrovia produced. So I have big flowers, repeat flower, May, June, and then again in summer, fall, but I've got a much smaller plant is the big thing. So I'll have the same colors I want, purples, reds, whites, everything under the sun, but I've just got a smaller version if we look at those Boulevard series. Uh, Viva Polonia is the new one from Proven Winners, so we'll have that in as well for the vine class. Uh, again, they tend to use a lot of Viticella, which is a species of Clematis they use in their breeding. That is better against wilt and wet, so sometimes their Clematis will take a little bit more wet than some others will and not die back with Clematis wilt. Um, this one, again, long, long season of bloom and light fragrance even on that one there's a couple they've done that actually get a little light smell on summer love was the first one we'll have that again as well and then this was the second one they produced as well too <coughs> honey baby was the one new honeysuckle i grabbed this year these aren't here quite yet but just a couple weeks i think again before the vine class if you know honeysuckle same thing vining habit great great for pollinators great smell on that one as well um, we have some good honeysuckles in already, but the brand new one here will just be another week or two. I did try wood vamp. It's got kind of an evil name to it. Um, so this is a plant I did some checking on my own self because I've had a lot of people ask for a vine that would grow on brick, wood, cedar, whatever, and kind of grow on a fence to shade it um, or a structure. So you can see I put a chimney picture on here on an old cottage or as well as a kind of a wood slat fence. This is a plant that will get some size to it. You can always prune it back, but this would be kind of a Native American type of hydrangea. So it's in the same family as our climbing hydrangeas, but just a little different flower <laughs> and maybe a little bigger and faster as far as growing habit. So not for everybody, but certainly we'll have these in here pretty quick as, a, as an option. Just a few annuals, we're almost done, I promise you. There's a few annuals, um, not here yet. 
um, some of the, the colocations you can see the, both those are absolutely stunning so this is not something I'm going to plant in my yard I want to make sure that's clear this would be for a container I could bring it as a house plant perhaps in the winter and keep it going or I'm buying it as an annual for a showstopper thriller for my container garden so these both will have in uh, Pharaoh's mask and redemption I've never seen anything with more three-dimensional leaves in my life when we saw these samples you can't tell in that picture but these those those purple ridges are raised an inch so all that pattern on top of the green is just a really cool plant uh, but again I wish we get keep global warming maybe in another 10 years we'll be able to have well, we'll be able to leave those in the ground kind of thing but that's would have to definitely come into the greenhouse the house or be dug and stored for the winter time Shade or sun. Um, you up here you can do either or to be honest I think in sun you're gonna get a little better color on them but I don't think they need all day sun this will be a great kind of half and half yep. uh, way too many petunias um, of all the annuals I picked out to throw a couple on here the ladies love these uh, I guess they're growing on me too I'm not a huge petunia guy but uh, we do have some of these in now and a lot of this still coming we plant most all our baskets petunias we do the city's petunias petunias everywhere so this is something that gets overbred every year there is a zillion new petunias everybody wants this brand or that brand we try to get everything we can but sometimes we may not have your brand but we have the same brand with the same color from somebody else so look at your options sometimes you'll call this is a this is something we probably got a hundred phone calls on the last two weeks do you have your proven winter petunias in do you have your specific breeding yes we have some well, do you have this one? No, but not yet. They're coming. So. Are these the ones you don't have to deadhead? Don't have to deadhead any of these. Any of the petunias now you buy are all the, the still petunias? sticky. They Super. still get flowers, but they still bloom on top of themselves. I don't have to go pinch them back or deadhead them. So I always look for a super tunia. Exactly. Super tunia, uh, surfina petunia. There's there's way too many petunias. So you'll see. We got a whole bunch in that house over there because um, we're going to start planting our baskets on Monday. So we'll start using up petunias here pretty quick. There's a couple others there too. Look at that hoopla. Who needs some hoopla, right? Uh, a couple other ones. So cannas. Um, just a few weeks again. These are just waking up right now. Um, there's always some pretty cool cannas coming our way. And this one might live through the winter. This is one of those plants right on the hardy line. But they grow from a bulb. So I do, one of, I do two in my front pots every year. I love the foliage. I like the flower. If I want to save it, I simply take the bulb out in the fall clean it off like I do dahlias, chop it off, store it, and I can go replant it again next year. So some of these you can find in bulb form, but we would have the plants in here for sale here and just probably about first of May or so we'll start to get the new cannas in. On the right there is something fun. We'll have these in a little bit later in May, but this is a miniature banana. So definitely not something I'm putting in my yard. I want to make sure that's clear, but I'm going to probably try one in a pot that I can take my pot in the house for the winter, throw it back out on the deck in the summer kind of thing, or I'll take it to my mother's and make her store it in her greenhouse in the winter for me, and I'll go pick it back up the next May. But this is something I'll actually get little bananas on with big, huge tropical green leaves, but on a plant that gets like three or four feet tall instead of like 25 feet tall. I've seen bananas in house they had to chop off and get rid of because they took over the whole living room kind of thing. So that's something, something kind of fun. Uh, somebody ruined my new apple already. Somebody figured out that we had these um, and called on the phone and bought every one of them, like 50 of them, two weeks ago. So I was happy to sell them, but I was like, you kind of ruined my new apples for this year, bud, but we'll get them again next year. So this is a brand new series of apples, the Lucy series that came out of a family over Euphrata, just across the mountains. Um, I think... I don't think he's limited to, to Washington like the others have over there. They've only allowed the Washingtonians to have Cosmic Crisp and some other new ones over there. Um, I'm telling you, I tried these at a show, and believe it or not, those taste like berries. I've never seen anything like it. It's like a really cool, it looks like any other apple, and you cut it open, and A, I got pink red flesh, which is not new on apples. I've tried those over the years, but they never really tasted like much. It was like, yeah, well, cool to look at, but not, not really super good taste. But this guy, who is a farmer who made these, is also a plant guy and had his degree in botany. So he spent probably half his life playing with pollen and crossing apple trees and came up with these three. So there's three of them, Lucy Jam, Lucy Glow, Lucy Rose. 
I've got gold, I've got striped, and I've got red, and they've all got great flavor, but literally, I don't want to say raspberry, because it's not all raspberry, but it kind of, if you, if you like juice, you ever drink cran raspberry juice? That's what it tastes like to me. It was like, oh wow, that's delicious. It was very interesting, kind of a little different taste. Uh, blackberries that don't make you bleed, these keep coming on too. So I like my berry pie, that's my thing. I love my berries, uh, but nothing's worse than bleeding to death when you're out trying to pick your berries, which is the case with most of them still. Um, but if you're into growing gourmet berries for yourself, tidy plants, a lot of these even uh, crop twice a year now versus one. And these are thornless, so I don't have to worry about bleeding when I'm picking. So we do have most of the uh, great thornless berries in back there as well. The brand new blueberry is the last one here. And this is the one probably about a month. Um, this is another Monrovia plant. If you've had bountiful blue blueberry, it's a great blueberry to grow up here. Heavy crop, a little bit smaller, bushier plant. Even sometimes evergreen if we don't get a cold winter. This is the miniature of that. So if I'm looking for a little smaller berry like wild blueberry with great complex flavor, this is a plant that might be like two, three feet, two, three feet is all. And I have a lot of wild blueberry cultivars I planted because I love the small berries and the flavor of myself. And this is one I'll pick up for sure because it was a much, real good taste but a lot smaller plant. And we will have a bunch of these. This is one a lot of customers have already asked for as well. Um, and we'll have a bunch of these when they do come in here pretty quick. Okay. You can see the production. And then that's fall. So I turn a deep red burgundy color. And again, if I don't get a cold winter, it's going to hold on to that color into the winter time. When we get super cold, then it'll start to drop its leaves. And then we leaf back out in spring. And then off we go for another season kind of thing. Okay. So last one here. So you saw me, I tried to remember on all of them to tell you, yes, it's here, it won't be for a month, whatever it'll be here. Um, we'll have most of all this in this year. I don't think any of this is going to get canceled. I was pretty adamant with our growers, like, I'm not going to put this on my slideshow if you're going to call me in June and tell me you have to wait another year to have it. So I think all this stuff on here will happen for sure. Um, some of it may be in the fall because some things are just a little slower or they're not available till then. Um, you know, if you found something that you like, Hopefully you wrote it down, email us, call us, leave me a note, whatever you want to do. We're one of the few nurseries that keeps a wish list and I frankly have a, a staff person dedicated to only that. That's just for you guys. It really doesn't make any money for us because we're just tracking names and numbers and calling you as stuff comes in. So there's no obligation on your part. If you're like, well that sounded interesting, I'm leaving my name. We call you in three weeks when it comes in and you're like, yeah, I moved on, I got something else, click. Nobody's gonna worry about it, all right? So if you want, interesting, leave your name. We keep shrubs, we keep perennials. I have a spreadsheet on my computer that she has access to, and we check it every single week. And I tell her, this is coming in. Make sure you call those three people, all that stuff, as we go through the season, okay? Um, email is easy. That's probably the best, honestly, because I can store the email. You can send it to the, the Sunnyside Nursery at msn.com. I put it right into her inbox. She's got it organized, and we're able to track it that way. But like I said, you're more than welcome to call. We can. I usually always have a notepad in my pocket. You can leave me your name and number, and I'll add it on there for you as well, too. Okay. So that's the QR code. I'll flip pages here, and I'll put that back up. And then that's our email, phone number, website, all that stuff if you need it as well. <coughs> there's, there's a. Somebody stole SunnysideNursery.com many moons ago. I think it's a nursery up in Canada somewhere. So we got stuck with net, but that's okay. I was like, I'm used to net now. Uh, for the class today, I think I caught most everybody, but a few people came in late. So this is always a hard class because I love putting on, you guys take the time to come down here and learn something and check out the latest, greatest this, this time. Uh, we want to get you, you know, something for your time, you know, a little discount shopping, whatever it is. This is always a class I'm like, I don't know what to do because I don't have 90% of it even in here yet. Hopefully they'll come back. Maybe they found something they liked. If you didn't get one, come up, grab one. I get you a coupon. I think I told her to put this all the way through June. So it's good for a long time. That way, if you leave your name, I want whatever it is. We have it on the wish list. You come to pick it up and you got your coupon sweet. And if you forgot and you came and found me, I'd probably be like, yes, you can have 20%. That's fine. Give me, give me the coupon. Or you can use it for something else today if you want to. It's up to you. So, uh, But that'll be good, good for down the road. 
Um, the other stuff just for the class, so our two go-to products are always Sure Start, you know, organic fertilizer from E.B. Stone, good for everything, transplanting, moving stuff, putting things in, whatever you're doing. Um, that's on 20% as well. If you need to get some Sure Start, you can stock up on that. And then compost, again, everything in the garden. Mulching, planting in beds, weed control, all the above. We get great organic compost in from E.B. Stone. You tell them you're at the class on any of this stuff, you'll get buy three, get one free on the compost here through next Friday. So if you're stocking up on compost like me, I think I took home 15 bales again last week. So the back of the house always has a pile of compost bales that I can use for everything and everything when we're working on the garden project. So you got compost special, bags or bales, the sure start, and then grab the coupon and you're good to go. Okay? So we got any questions? Yeah, I've been on the wish list since last year. Ball. For for um, a bonsai tree, you helped me trim it one time, and it was but it died. Okay. And um, and I wanted the same thing. So okay. They, are they? No, no bonsai here just yet. But the, the maple. The, the, the mi mini maple. Yeah. The okay. Bright red. So I'm on the list for those. That's only from one place. And last year we scored, and they gave me a hundred. This year, I've had nothing, and we'll get them in eventually. I've been yelling at them for like five months. So I'm still on the list. So yeah, on the list. Li the list never goes away okay. unless you call and say, "Take me off the list. I'm done no, waiting." It's that. it's never that. on. Never goes away. And then a lot of times, like this happens every week. You know, we finally get something in. Jules will will email the customer or call them and say, "Hey, just to give you a heads up, we finally got these in. If you still need them, no worries. If not, no worries." And so they email back, yes, I'll be there on Saturday, I can't wait, or nope, sorry, I already found something else, I'm good, you can take me off the list, and we take you off and you're done. So. I got my pot ready, I'm waiting for it. You and me. So I, that's a really cool tree. The problem with those, um, they're seed grown for one, that's the only maple in existence that is not grafted, so it's a long time to even get that is like three years, literally. So I have one in a pot in my yard that's that tall and about that wide, and I've had it for 18 years. I mean, literally, it is a long time. I had it before they even named it. They gave me one to try. I was like, oh, yeah, maple, I'll take that. So they're fun, but be patient. We'll get them in eventually. Yeah. Yes, anybody else? Everybody's ready to get something new? Yes. He said, um, be bomb and... Um what do you spray it with so it doesn't... Hit? So again, I mean, I, I'm, part of the reason I buy a bee bomb is because I like my bees and my pollinators, so I'm not going to use anything chemical. If I'm going to prevent mildew, it's really easy to do this time of year as they're coming up. I've already sprayed mine once. Neems, I can use like a natural copper fungicide, but something, they're not even blooming yet, so I'm not worried about the bee action. But if I can keep the mildew off the foliage here until we get warmer and drier, I'm good to go for the summer. If I let it get mildew here later April, May, I'm probably going to have a little, either I got to cut it back, let it start over again, or I got to manage it a little bit with the spray. Yeah. Yes. Is it too early to get on the wish list for Lucy for next year? Uh, not at all. In fact, you, in fact, you'll be the first one on the 2025 fruit tree list. I'll, I got I to start a new page. No, it's fine. I, like I said, we're, you know, we're in retail. We're all greedy capitalists to some extent. I was happy to sell out, but I was just like, what a bummer. I knew this class was coming up. We had a lot of people excited about the fruit class. We sold quite a few. I wanted to watch him leap out, and I was hoping I'd get an apple to pick this summer. But he knew what he was doing, because I was like, what happened to all the loose? Like, dude, some guy called her yesterday, took all of them. And I'm like, yeah, hey, yeah, he's smart, but to shame on you. You ruined it for the rest of them. So which of the three is the Boy... They're all good. I think what you would probably choose is the color. Do you want r gold foliage or gold, gold skin, red skin, or that striped? I, if I was picking, I'd probably go striped. To be honest, the gem. I thought that might have had even a little more raspberry flavor, but they're all they were all good. I mean, we've tried. Like I said, we this is something we had a place in Cleveland for 30 years that I went. I had a lot of fruit over there. I played with. And I tried, the red flesh apples is nothing new. They've been around for a long time. But the flavor was like, why should I you know, worry about that? I can get that, you get better taste on Granny Smith or whatever other one I liked. I'd go, it's like, ah, there's nothing special to me. This was different. When I tried it, it was like, oh wow, that is really different. We gotta try those. So, um, you know, and again, 
that particular apple I would watch it's not like any more prone than anyone else but watch full sun so that you get good ripening before it gets too late and, and watch the scout a little bit in the spring it would be one of those like not that I gotta walk out and fumigate it once a week but I'd watch the scab a little bit more than than maybe Liberty or some of the most disease resistant ones kind of thing. Yep. Did you say all the roses are in stock? Yes, um, I said that. Don't come punch me after class. <laughs> um, I don't think we've sold out of any of those new ones. Okay. Yeah, and if we have, A, I'd apologize, and B, I might still be able to get more of that, especially the knockout and the drift. Um, our growers will grow those, and I'm kind of OCD with roses, and I want to prune them all, I want to grow them all, I want them done a certain way. So we can go kind of organic here. I don't use any chemical on a rose crop anymore. Um, so that, those ones I can buy from a grower, you know, and I don't know that they hit them with neem oil like I did every two weeks all spring, um, but I'll ask them and say, I know they don't use any neonics, none of our people do anymore, but um, that's something we can replace. The Power Puff, the Quest for Zest, that kind of stuff, when it's gone, I hate to say, I'm out until we can get bare root again in January. Those I can't usually relocate again. Yes. Do the Lucy's come in dwarf or semi-dwarf? They were, next year they'll be both. I've already asked, we get all our fruit trees local from the Behringer family right up in Mount Vernon. Uh, Joey and Missy have grown up my trees for 30 something years now, I've known them. Um, he told me they're gonna do them on both. This year it was semi, but I think next year they'll be on that M29 and the M27. So we would have semi-dwarf and dwarf. Yep, yep. All right, new plant excitement, all right. So thanks for coming down.